I'm Craig Kenneth, a relationship coach and a psychotherapist. Every relationship is different and every breakup is different. Work with me and you'll get professional help on your situation. And if you're in no contact, focused on personal growth, my workbook series, The Knowledge, will help you make changes like you've never made before. Available now at AskCraig.net. Hi there, I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. I'm Coach Margaret. And today we're going to be talking about three signs a relationship is developing. Margaret came across an interesting article that has a very unique approach on how to figure out if a relationship is developing with somebody. Because oftentimes people are very confusing with their behavior. Yes, they can be. So we have an interesting article that has a unique take on how to figure out if one is developing or somebody may be playing games with you. That's right. All right, now I know this will not surprise you for me, but this article was written by an animal behaviorist. And I love her perspective. And she says, dating is supposed to be fun, but Unlike other animals, humans can have hidden intentions and multiple agendas. Yes, we can. Mm -hmm. And can attempt to manipulate others to satisfy our own wants and desires. Mm -hmm. For example, if somebody's interested in somebody, but only for a short-term affair, not a relationship. Other times, they may be dating multiple people, and you are not the preferred love interest. These and other scenarios don't make dating quite so much fun, and sifting through the confusion can be tiresome and painful. So she suggests that we look at what the animals do, uh, because they can't have hidden agendas. They don't know how to do that. Mm. All right? So she suggests we look at the basic behavior of animals in love in order to help us sort out all this nonsense. Mm -hmm. And she talks about hoot owls. And she says, no, great horned owls, I think they hoot quite a bit. Great horned owls are a terrific example of this principle. I am currently doing research on these magnificent birds, and pairs are in constant communication with each other. Mm -hmm. They hoot back and forth all night long, mm -hmm. okay? We call each other on the cell. <laughs> I like the approach. If you want it chance to listen, you can go to an ornithology library. You probably don't want to go quite that far. Mm -hmm. uh, but as humans, we can relate. Just as they get excited when their partner hoots to them during the night, mm -hmm. we get excited if we get a call from our honey. Exactly. Right? All right. I, have, I occasionally get owls in the, Do you? In the summertime. I hear huh? them more. Yeah. 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 Um, I guess they're quite communicative. This yeah. woman specializes in... They keep in me up. <laughs> this woman specializes in animal behavior. There are so many wonderful fields in this world. That would be fascinating. This woman studies social behavior. You know, when I was growing, growing up as a kid, there used to always be owls where I lived. Really? And I could still like hear it in my mind, like when you tried to fall asleep or throughout the night, yes. they'd be calling to each other. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you really remember hearing mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. I could hear it. Yeah. yeah. How romantic. Um... All right, the other thing that the animals do is they spend a whole lot of time together. Mm -hmm. And she talks about barnacle geese. Now, I ever heard, never heard of barnacle geese, but they mate for life. So they have to make a really careful decision. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think sandhill cranes do too. Do they? Yeah, I think so. Yes, they do. And they go crazy if they lose a partner. Oh, yes. And mm -hmm. then they try and talk to their reflection in the door. It's kind of painful. Ooh. Yeah. Um, so, and you know, if, they, if the geese break up, they're back on the market and they date again. Uh, but we're not geese, and alone time and time with friends is important. But the reality is that if someone is only making time to see you infrequently, or only when it's convenient for them and doesn't introduce you to friends and family, they're not serious about you. Mm -hmm. And or they're ruffling the feathers of another goose. Mm. All right? But I like it, and I've had many people ask me that. And it's usually women asking about men, why doesn't he introduce me to his mother? She just lives on the other side of town. Um, you know, why doesn't he ever introduce me to his friends? And this lady is saying, let me tell you, according to the geese, he's not serious. Yeah. 
Okay. And I'd agree with those geese. I would too. Now we come to a little animal you may not have heard of, but every book I read on attachment refers to them. They're called voles, V-O-L-E-S. They look like hamsters. They look like hamsters. They're cute little things. And the reason we're so interested in them is they, their bodies use oxytocin much the same way that we do. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting to study them in terms of attachment. Now, what they are famous for is that they're very affectionate with each other. Okay? Mm -hmm. So now we're on to the third thing. So if, the guy, if somebody really cares about you, they're going to find every chance they can to communicate with you. Right? Mm -hmm. um, they're going to introduce you to everybody in their life. And they're going to be affectionate with you. Not that we're suggesting blatant public displays of affection. <laughs> We've all heard about not doing mm -hmm. that at school, right? This can be misappropriated by someone not truly interested in you. Why? Generally speaking, when someone is seriously interested in another, there is a lot of compulsive affection. I'm not talking about touching that leads to sex. But garden variety, hand holding, arms around you, hugging, nuzzling, close physical proximity, etc. And it can happen in public. A failure to do so in public usually represents announcing to the world that they are not with you. Mm. Okay? So, if you don't want to be with me and sit with me, so there. Partner Prairie Voles are a model of constant cuddling. Mm -hmm. They mate for life, are mostly monogamous, and are very touchy with their mate. Why? It's all about reinforcing bonding. Research at Emory University found that the more time a pair spent huddling, their version of cuddling, um, was greater, the greater, the more the amount of huddling, the greater the degree of attachment to the partner. Mm. Um, so it's important. The more time they spend touching, the more time they want to spend with each other. All of this positive feedback may be driven by oxytocin, our favorite hormone, mm -hmm. and dopamine being released. The feeling that you are high on love. These prairie voles are high on love. There you have it. Okay. You look at the animals and they, they, they show you what their behavior is. Honest to God. Um, so, if they're not into the three things of regular and consistent communication, um, spending as much time as they can, and not being affectionate with you, and sort of announcing that they're with you, don't bother, she says. Now, I think it's important to say one last thing. These are the behaviors that people would obviously display if they're looking to get into a relationship yeah. or you're in a relationship mm -hmm. not the signs and symptoms if you're in a breakup no no i think we need to clarify that because people will be like getting confused and okay. upset because yeah. they're getting emotional yeah but this is what you're trying to look for if you're dating somebody new right. are they doing these three things yeah. or are they trying to repair it with you after you i was going to say and to rekindle a relationship some of this same stuff could occur. But I think it would happen slower in a rekindling yeah. than it would in a new relationship. Yeah. Here's another thing to remember. Mrs. Vole here has five little ones in this picture. I wish we could share the picture with you. So Mrs. Vole, you might want to think a long time before holding whatever's with him again. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So if you look at the three basic behaviors, it really will tell you a lot right. about somebody's true intent. Yes, and honest really to God. Bonding with you. Yep. Uh, give Margaret a thumbs up for her research on finding this one. Hopefully you <laughs> found it enjoyable. Of course, if you want to get our help, just go to my website, askcraig.net. Sign up for the coaching option that works best for you. Do email coaching and I do Skype. Margaret is available for Skype coaching. Yes, if you think I can be helpful, please sign up with me. I'd love to talk with you. You just click on Margaret on the top of the website to do that. But that's it for this video. I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. I'm Coach Margaret. And we will talk with you soon.